السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all conditions. We thank Allah for everything that he has bestowed upon us and we seek his protection from being among those who are cast into hellfire. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, وَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ حَالِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the condition of those who shall be cast in hellfire. والصلاة والسلام على أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets, the one whom Allah chose to send to us, to guide us to the straight path. So everything we do in terms of goodness, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam receives a full reward because he was the one sent to teach us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his intercession on the day of judgment. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters, speaking of the day of judgment, you and I know that on that day, wealth will not help you unless you have spent it while you were alive. So anything you earned on the day of judgment, it will only be written next to your name as being spent if you spent it while you were alive. But if you did not spend it, it went to someone else and perhaps they might have used it, utilized it positively or negatively. That was someone else. So this is why while you're alive, make sure that you spend, make sure that you do for the sake of Allah, make sure you reach out to the needy. There is no point in us amassing a lot of wealth. And then when it, when we get to the day of judgment, we tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, you know, you remember I had a lot of wealth. So if you want, you can take all of that wealth, but give me Jannah. It's not good enough. It's foolish. That wealth means nothing. If you think carefully that wealth, gold and silver is actually from the dust, from the soil. It is dug from the ground. That is earth. It was given value because Allah wanted it to have a little bit of value so that you and I could use it as a currency. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding. Allah speaks about the oppressors and those who did wrong during their lives. When they die without repenting and if theirs was hellfire, meaning if it was destined for them, then they will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from them whatever the world has contained in terms of material wealth. And Allah says, even if they did that, we wouldn't accept it from them. Listen to what Allah says, verse number 37 of Surah Al-Ma'idah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, those who have disbelieved, those who have disbelieved on the day of judgment, if they were to have whatever the earth holds in terms of material value, all the wealth of the whole earth doubled up and they were to try and give it in order to get themselves freed from the fire or from the punishment it won't be accepted it will be too late so the message is save yourselves by believing in allah save yourselves by believing in the oneness of the maker by worshiping the one god he who made you he whom you are going to return to may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us safety Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for them will be a painful punishment. May Allah not punish us. My brothers and sisters, it's about time we turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, sometimes we find that people say Islam is barbaric because it dooms the non-Muslims to hellfire. Don't you hear that in the Quran, Allah says those who disbelieve shall be cast in hellfire. Those who believed good news for them. So people then say, well, it's a bad religion. How can it teach that the most merciful casts people into hellfire? If you take a careful look, these are warnings from your maker. Christianity has even greater warnings and Judaism has similar warnings. All the religions believe that they are right. And they also believe anyone who doesn't adopt that faith is actually going to be cast in hellfire. The Christians believe that if you don't take Jesus as your personal savior, you have absolutely no hope on earth. Nothing. You have no hope whatsoever. 
The Muslims believe that if you don't take he who made you as your personal savior, you have no hope. Subhanallah. If you don't take he who made you, he who created you, he whom you are going to return to, the one and only, the one who made you, nourishes, cherishes, provides, the one in absolute control of every aspect of your existence. If you don't take him as your personal savior, there, there will be nobody to save you. Subhanallah. So you can see the value of two statements. Common logic. It's up to you to choose which one you want. If you want to save yourself, like I said, we believe we are correct. They have every right in this world to believe that they are right. They are answerable to Allah. Similarly, the Jews have the right to believe that they are correct. But at the same time, the judging will happen on the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then declare what was right, what was wrong, etc, etc. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala issues warnings. And if you take a look at Islam, we have utmost respect for the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him. Utmost respect for the Prophet Moses, Musa alayhi salatu was salam. So, if you were to look at Islam, it is a faith that has respect of all these messengers, all of them completely. But if you take a look at the other faiths, they drop one or two or more and they disrespect them, they call them names, they actually blaspheme against them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. If someone were to draw cartoons about the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him, those cartoons would hurt us just as the cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu have hurt us. The same applies to the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him. Anyone joking about Musa or Moses, may peace be upon him, would hurt us because as Muslims we are taught all of these were the chosen messages of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Messengers whom we are supposed to say after their names, peace be upon him. If you don't say that, you are disrespecting those messengers. May peace be upon them all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about seeking forgiveness. And you know, Allah words it in a beautiful way. Beautiful way. You know, when you want a child to do something, you tell them in a nice way, come on, why don't you do this? Come on, why don't you come here? You see what will happen. You speak in a very sweet way. Listen to how Allah words the issue of seeking forgiveness. He's telling us something very interesting. Verse number 74 of Surah Al-Ma'idah. أَفَلَا يَتُوبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَهُ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Will they not turn or return to Allah and seek forgiveness? For indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Subhanallah. Look at Allah addressing everyone. Yes, it may have been revealed for a specific group of people, but the lesson in these verses is for every one of us. Allah says, Tawbah and Istighfar. The difference between the two, Tawbah means to return to Allah. Change your bad ways, your habits, and your life has changed. That means you have engaged in Tawbah. And Istighfar means to seek forgiveness. So you seek forgiveness and you change your ways. That means you did Istighfar and you did Tawbah. Allah here is asking you to do both of those. Don't just say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. And on top of that, your life hasn't changed. Oh Allah, forgive me. You know, I'm weak. I'm going to go back there tomorrow. But for today, you can forgive me, Oh Allah. It doesn't work that way. My brothers and sisters, it never works that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, seek forgiveness, change your life. See, we will give you paradise. We are most forgiving, most merciful. Save yourselves, my brothers and sisters, from the torment by seeking Allah's forgiveness and changing your lives. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a certain quality that people would have that would result in the curse of Allah upon them. What is that quality? When you don't correct people. Subhanallah. Allah says some of the people of the book, we cursed them because they never used to correct each other. We ne we, they never used to correct each other. When they did something wrong, they were too shy. They were too quiet. They used to look at each other and that's it. Nobody told anyone, look my brother, I think you are wrong. Even in the least, in Islam we are taught that you have to feel at least in your heart that this is wrong. And if you can do something about it with your tongue, if you have the authority to do that, you should do that. And if you have the authority to change it by hand, then you should do that too. If you don't have the authority or you are helpless, you cannot do anything about it. In that case, you do it with your tongue or at least you feel in your heart. You know what? This is something that is really bad. I'm not a party to it and I don't agree with it. Allah says, and this is a beautiful verse, number 79 of Surah Al-Ma'idah. 
لعن الذين كفروا من بني إسرائيل على لسان داود وعيسى بن مريم ذلك بما عصوا وكانوا يعتدون كانوا لا يتناهون عن منكر فعلوه لبئس ما كانوا يفعلون الله speaks of those who were cursed and then he says they used not to correct each other when they used to do bad they did not used to prohibit against evil whenever evil was done Allah says that was a very very bad act in itself may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to do two things number one to correct one another number two not to feel bad when we are corrected may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us remember if you do not feel bad when you are corrected, you will save yourself from dropping in standards, both spiritually as well as in any other way. Because if you don't feel bad, that's the only time you will be able to improve. People will gladly correct you. Gladly. Imagine you are writing one plus one is five. And someone tells you, hey, brother, it's two. Hey, keep quiet. Who do you think you are? Get out. Allahu Akbar. My brother, I know it's two. I'm telling you it's two. You're going to fail. No, I don't want to hear you. Move. You feel bad. You're supposed to say, thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. I hope you're not cheating in the examination. But inshallah, it is the correct answer. Two, not five. Alhamdulillah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about something very serious that we need to all save ourselves from. You and I know the problem of the age is drugs and intoxicants. You and I know that in our societies, we have children, sometimes decent children. Sometimes their character is good. Their conduct is good. But they have a huge downfall. What is it? drugs, alcohol, the nightlife. This is why the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu if you have nothing constructive or meaningful to do after Salatul Isha, that is the night prayer, go to bed. If you have a habit of going to bed immediately after the night prayer, you will save yourselves from 90% of evil because 90% of evil happens after that at night. Subhanallah, people go and commit sin. They go to the clubs. You know, that's why it's called a nightclub. Have you ever thought of it? Do you have a day club, afternoon club, morning club, midday club? No, it's a nightclub, which means for the evil to happen, it has to be at night. It's dark. Astaghfirullah. You are hiding from what? The spirituality. But you never hide from the eyes of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May He open our doors. Allah warns us in verse number 90 of Surah Al-Ma'idah that alcohol and intoxicants as well as gambling and various other forms of worshipping the devil all these are the abomination or they are an abomination the handiwork of the devil so stay very far from these things Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu innamal khamru wal maysir wal أصاب والأزلام رجس من عمل الشيطان فاجتنبوه لعلكم تفلحون. These things mentioned in terms of intoxicants, the term khamr is used, alcohol or any intoxicants are included in that, as well as gambling, as well as drawing lots and worshiping the devil in any way. Allah says this is an abomination from the handiwork of the devil. So stay far from it if you want to succeed. If you want to save yourselves from failure, stay away from these things. My brothers and sisters, it is a problem. Promise Allah you will quit your drugs tonight. Promise Allah, no matter what it is, even if it is something considered light by your friends, it is heavy in the eyes of Allah. It is serious. It is unnecessary. We need you as a member of the Ummah to serve this Ummah. You have so many great qualities. Don't spoil yourself by not throwing out this habit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Don't plunge yourself into failure. Many people, sometimes you have a decent person. He's a good guy. You wouldn't even tell. He gets married and later on, subhanallah, people find out this person's on drugs. They can't even believe it because sometimes he actually comes for salah and he actually prays. May Allah protect us. 
My brothers and sisters, the same applies to gambling. I think we don't talk about it enough. Many people gamble. This gambling is the devil dangling a carrot in front of you. And you are like the donkey. There is a rod that the devil is holding. No matter how much you run, you're never going to get that carrot. Subhanallah. You're never going to get the carrot. So never ever put your hard earned cash and your hard earned money into somewhere where you are gambling it off. You know, you are taking risks. That's not it. You will never receive or achieve any blessings by putting your wealth in the wrong direction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. Allah says thereafter. And this is a test that he will always test us with. You know, my brothers and sisters, when you promise Allah, let me give you a typical example. Those who commit adultery or have committed adultery and you promise Allah, warm tears roll down your cheeks. You say, Ya Allah, I made a mistake in the past. I'm never going to do it again. Allah says, I'll forgive you. So now your life has changed. Mashallah, you've quit your bad ways. You are forgiven by Allah. Now Allah says, we want to test you. We will test you by doing what? Dangling it in front of you, making it easy to happen. And it's going to come and it's going to be accessible in order to see were you genuine in your repentance. It can become easier than the time when you used to do it before repentance. That's Allah's way of testing you. You know, when you are in ihram, it's haram to hunt. Okay, it's haram to hunt animals in ihram. Allah says that in the Quran. So hunting is prohibited when you are in the condition of ihram. And Allah says when you are in that condition, we will test you by making beautiful hunting animals come right close range to you. Like they are teasing you because we want to see who fears Allah really and who is just playing the fool. So Allah says this in a beautiful verse, verse number 94 of Surah Al-Ma'idah. And I always smile when I read this because I know it's Allah testing us. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَيَبْلُوَنَّكُمُ اللَّهُ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الصَّيْدِ تَنَالُهُ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَرِمَاحُكُمْ لِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَخَافُهُ بِالْغَيْبِ Oh you who believe Allah will test you with the hunting animals coming very close, close range, close at the proximity of your spears and your hands in order to test you who from amongst you fears Allah fears Allah in the unseen do you know when this animal comes and you know it's haram for you you just got to turn around and say oh Allah you, you declared it haram and I'm going away there you are that's the winner same applies I gave an example of adultery I give you another example of haram income someone is earning income through haram means and thereafter they quit they said oh Allah no more interest I'm not going to eat anymore I've actually made tawbah I've given away whatever excess it was and now I've turned to you the same day a guy will phone you and say three million rands are you ready you cannot just say, you know what? Oh Allah, one more deal and then tomorrow I'll seek forgiveness. No, no, no. That's Allah testing you. Look, we brought it to you in a bigger way. Now that you repented to Allah, only for you to be tested. Are you genuine in your repentance or not? Save yourselves by being genuine. Save yourselves. It could be your last day. Perhaps you say, oh Allah, one more day and you die after putting the phone down. What happened? You failed your test. Say, no, my brother, I used to do this before, but I advise you also not to do it. And you put the phone down and you should be happy. Allahu Akbar, my brothers and sisters, that is the test. And Allah says, you know, evil. This is a powerful point because you can apply it to many aspects of living. Evil and goodness will never be the same. Even if evil is in the majority, even if the whole world is doing what is bad. Certain things, you know, immorality and certain habits, certain ways. Even if the whole world considers this okay, if it is not okay in the eyes of Allah, it will remain not okay. That's what Allah is saying. So Allah says in verse number 100 of Surah Al-Ma'idah, قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِي الْخَبِيثُ وَالطَّيِّبِ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكَ كَثْرَةُ الْخَبِيثِ Say, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that which is evil and sinful will never be equal to that which is good and clean and pure. Even if you are surprised or amazed or amused by the great number or the, by the 
great amount of that which is bad, evil, and that which is impure and unacceptable. It will remain unacceptable even if the whole world thinks otherwise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all steadfast. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us. He warns us about ourselves. A lot of us, we are quick to talk about everyone else. Very quick. Oh, the sister did that. That brother did that. Do you know the latest gossip? Some of us have chat groups on WhatsApp for gossiping. We want to know the latest about this man, his life, his wife, and all the strife. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. This is very, very distractive because you are now, instead of concentrating on your weaknesses, you are getting a kick by listening to what others may or may not have done. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to save ourselves by worrying about ourselves. A true believer will occupy himself with his own weaknesses rather than occupying himself with the weaknesses of others. As a Muslim, my life should be led such that 24 seven, I'm worried about myself and how I'm going to improve. If I'm spending one minute worrying about someone else's weakness in a negative way, then definitely I have lost. Why do I say a negative way? I am allowed to be worried in a positive way. I see something bad. I make dua to Allah. My aim is not to embarrass the person or try and expose them. My aim is to solve the problem by calling out to Allah. If I can help them, my brother, you know, yesterday I saw you, you know, you had a bottle of alcohol in your hand. I'm quite sure it must have been for someone else, but don't even have it in your hand. Subhanallah. And he look at you and say, well, it was me drinking it. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So if you can, yes, you must in a positive way. You have a problem with someone, you've seen something, tell them straight and direct. Whether they like you or they don't, it's besides the point. But don't go around spreading tales. Allah says in verse number 105 of Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ya ayyuhal amanu alaykum anfusakum la yadurrukum man dalla idha ahtadaytum ila Allahi marji'ukum Allah says, O oh you who believe, be concerned about yourselves. Worry about yourselves. Those who are astray will not harm you, nor will they affect you if you are concerned about yourselves and if you are rightly guided. If I am rightly guided, all the misguided people will not be able to affect me. So Allah says, so worry about yourselves. You are all ultimately going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand this. My brothers and sisters, we move on to the next surah, Surah Al-An'am. And in it, there are so many verses for us to learn from and to save ourselves from the wrath and the punishment in this world and the next. There were nations and people who were served punishment in this world. And that was because they used to laugh at they used to scoff at the messengers, mock at them, swear them, belittle them, and make a joke of them. So the prophets of Allah, may peace be upon them, when they were sent to nations, some of those nations, some of the people from those, they used to laugh, make a joke, and they used to make a mockery of, they used to try to actually belittle these messengers. And Allah says, because of them belittling those who are loved by Allah, we punish them. They got part of what they deserved. They found it and they were made to taste it. Listen to what Allah says, verse number 10 of Surah Al-An'am. وَلَقَدْ اسْتُهْزِئَ بِرُسُلٍ مِّن قَبْلِكَ فَحَاقَ بِالَّذِينَ سَخِرُوا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا بِيَسْتَهْزِئُونَ And indeed, before you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there were messengers whom the people tried to make a mockery of. They jeered at them. They said bad things about them. So what reached them was a part of the punishment because of what they earned themselves. Because of this mockery, they were punished. Now the lesson I have is from amongst us, they are friends of Allah. We don't know them sometimes. Don't mock at people. Don't laugh at people. Don't make a joke or belittle people because if that person happens to be a friend of Allah, it spells doom for you. You don't know. Be kind to people. Sometimes the ulama, when they guide us, we look at them and we disagree. And we disagree, but on top of that, we become 
disrespectful. We start swearing them. We start mocking at them. We start calling them names. It's a matter of time before you are punished. This man is working for Allah. This man's whole life is dedicated to Allah. And what you are doing, you who is busy earning a livelihood day in, day out, you barely have time for salah. Sometimes your life might be spent in the nightclub and you are coming and swearing those who are serving Allah's cause. And you are the one who has the biggest bad words to refer to the ulama and the scholars and those who are pious, for example. If that is the case, how will you save yourself from the punishment when Allah promises you that it's coming in your direction? If not today, then tomorrow. We don't need that. Save yourself by protecting your tongue. Say a good word. If you really disagree, say, you know what, mashallah, I disagree. But this is a good man. He does a lot of good work. There are two or three things I might disagree. That's the way a human being and a mu'min, a believer, should look at things. You may disagree with two or three things. No alim or no scholar of Islam is perfect. The messengers were perfect. The scholars, they will make mistakes at times. But you don't have to insult them. You don't have to use poisonous words. You don't have to degrade them because I promise you before you die, you will witness the punishment of that. You will see it. These are people who work for Allah and Allah says through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith Qudsi, Man aada li waliyan faqad aadhantuhu bil harbi. Whoever harms a friend of mine, I announce war against him. Allahu Akbar. Whoever harms a friend of mine, I announce war against him. Think about it and I need to think about it. For me to say bad words about a scholar of Islam or one of those who are fulfilling salah or a person who is pious, for me to spread evil, what am I doing? I have perhaps harmed or I am trying to harm a friend of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, I've just announced war with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and grant us strength. Never ever. Make a mockery of people. Try never to do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Then we have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam making mention of something very, very strong. Allah instructs him to say something to the people. What was it? Allah says in verse number 15 of Surah Al-An'am. قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنْ عَصَيْتُ رَبِّي عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ من يصرف عنه يومئذ فقد رحمه وذلك الفوز المبين. Tell them, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that I fear if I were to transgress against my own Rabb, the punishment that is very, very great. I fear if I were to transgress against my own Rabb, the punishment that is very, very great. Whoever is saved from that punishment on the day of judgment has indeed succeeded for that is the great success or the clear manifest success. Now imagine if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was sinless, spotless, absolutely perfect, the best of creation, the most noble of prophets, the guide, the one who will be the first to enter paradise. Subhanallah. If he is telling you, look, I am worried if I were to transgress that Allah would punish me. The lesson is only for us. He would never transgress. It's impossible for him to transgress. He has not transgressed the command of Allah, but he is telling us that you know what? No matter who you are, never transgress, never go against the limits of Allah. That is the message. That is the message. Because if you transgress, you need to be worried and you need to be fearful of a punishment that will come in your direction. So if you want to save yourself from that, don't transgress, turn to Allah, repent and Allah will accept that repentance. And then Allah says, who is the successful one? The one who has achieved a clear success is the one who arrives on the day of judgment. And he's told you are safe from the fire. You are saved from hell. You're not going to go there. You can celebrate on that day. Do you know why? That is the greatest success. In this world, you've earned a million, a billion. You've done whatever else. That celebration is very, very temporary. In fact, Allah asks you to govern the way. Allah governs, in fact, the way you can celebrate on earth. But at the same time, the day you are given the book on the right hand or in your right hand, you have every right to celebrate on that day. You can show people, look, this is my, these are my deeds. I did them on that day. 
there's no more pride and everything of that nature that was evil. You're allowed to show off because you deserve the goodness. The angels will be greeting and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true success. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate our status. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Brothers and sisters, spare a moment to make dua for the suffering brothers and sisters across the globe, especially in Syria and Iraq and various other nations where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested them. They are suffering and struggling. May Allah bless us all. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد